You bring people into a community, it's like your living room, okay? It's like, okay, now you're coming into my house. I'm going to give you a little bit more of me, right? We're going to build this relationship. And I trust you because I allowed you to come into my living room. So I see the communities as that, as your living room where you can give exclusive content that you can't provide in your wall, in your business page. And that, again, brings loyalty. This is The Fighting Entrepreneur, the podcast dedicated to entrepreneurs looking to change the world. Learn how to start, build, and scale a business in today's highly competitive business environment. Here's your host, The Fighting Entrepreneur, Anik Singhal. What's up, you crazy fighting entrepreneurs? Guess who it is? Your favorite person in the whole wide world, back with another fight for this episode, but I can't fight today because we've got a lady in the ring with me today and um, she probably kicked my butt anyway, so I'm not gonna go there. But we have an amazing episode to talk about. It's real. We're gonna get real. I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna put some shields down. I wanna let you guys in. I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm like kind of 50-50 on this, so I'm playing a new, I'm, I'm in a new place. Um, I just got done listening recently to an episode that Tim Ferriss did with a person whose name I don't remember, but that, person happens to be a very successful entrepreneur and he speaks about the importance of entrepreneurs especially at the top being real because we sometimes we post this like very rosy picture about the world and how everything is perfect for us and everything is great and that's not true it never will be true and unfortunately those of us those of us and those of you who follow that you start to think that that's what life should look like Um, and I've actually had a really interesting experience with that myself the last few weeks or a couple months. So we're going to have this really real conversation because I've got a guest on today who I'm going to be honest, she's probably wondering what is going on with me a little bit because she is someone I work with on a regular basis. So some full disclaimer, I trust her so much. I value her advice and her expertise so much. I pay her every month. All right. So I'm bringing you the real expert here. All right. And we're going to talk about how she uses Facebook groups to ridiculously increase your brand loyalty, to increase your brand presence, your brand awareness using Facebook groups. Now, a few months ago, I actually brought her on to help manage all of our Facebook groups. And now I'm sitting in an interesting place. If you listened to my episode last week, you came to learn that I've actually now, at the time of the release of this episode, I mean, between the release and, I mean, it's 10 days before I'm recording this, so unless I've given in somehow in those 10 days, which is very possible, I've been off of Facebook for nearly a month. Completely off. Deleted the app, haven't logged in. I do miss my group. I'm going to be honest. So why am I not engaging with my group at all? Because I don't have the discipline to log into Facebook and only look at my groups. I'll end up going into the vortex of the rest of Facebook, and that's where I've been wanting to avoid. Now, I'm not going to repeat myself as to why. That wasn't the last episode. You're welcome to go listen to it. I get into the specifics of why. It's left me in a very interesting place. What do I do with my group? I love my group. As a matter of fact, I can tell you, just the inside my head Facebook group, I never created this group to monetize. I honestly never did. It was a group I created to have more connection with those who follow Learn and specifically who follow me. And I'll tell you why, because we've become a company now with over a hundred employees. It's a blessing. And in some days it feels like a curse because I have so many layers between me and our customer. And so I wanted to get connected again. And that's why I created this group and it was amazing. And it's been going amazing. But now I've pulled away from it for a month or so. So I messaged Jennifer about a month, about a week ago. And I was like, hey, might be pulling back. And, you know, and it's funny because right before we started this episode, she reminded me of the recent episode I released. And she's like, "Um, on that episode, you just said you're going to like blow things up. So what's going on with you? I'm having a little bit of a, you know, I'm having a bit of a roller coaster with my, my Facebook relationship right now. Truth of it is I'm trying to figure it out. I, if Facebook had a groups app, we wouldn't have this problem. I would still be my, my Facebook profile would, wouldn't care about my groups would be, I'd be super active in. So I'm in the process of making a decision. Let me tell everyone right now, Facebook groups are amazing. All right. They're amazing. The amount of impact that they've had in my business in the last few months that I got serious about them is seven figures. It's not six figures. It's seven figures. So I almost feel like I have to do a disclaimer. I'm going through a personal thing. That does not mean Facebook is bad. Actually, I'm telling you, I wish Facebook, Facebook is smart. They joined the two into one app. 
so that we, so that we can't just do one without the other. Um, so if you're not using groups and you're on Facebook, I actually think you're throwing away millions over the course of your life. If you're trying to become a brand, if you want, if you, especially if you're doing information marketing, affiliate marketing, courses, coaching, uh, consulting, and you don't have a group, forget about it. With me, with my Inside My Head group, I mean, I'm telling you, I have not done half of what Yennefer is going to tell me to do today, and I've already made so much money. And I never meant to make money, but I've, what happens when people fall in love with you, when you're real and genuine, they throw money at you. They literally want to be there with you in every step of the turn. So, um, yeah, we're just going to have an honest conversation. with. This is the longest introduction I've ever done to an episode because I wanted to make sure you understood I'm taking all the armor off and we're going to have a real conversation. I want you to hear how you should do groups because they're incredibly powerful. But you may not see me doing everything you hear only because I'm just trying to figure out what I do with my time. So, again, now remember, if you want to... I am back on my newsletter. My newsletters are going back out again. So insidemyhead.com, you can sign up for my free newsletter. We got that systemized again. So that is going to 100% be happening. So with that said, man, that's enough rambling. Uh, if you're still listening right now, go ahead and click subscribe. Click the thumbs up icon. Leave me a comment if you're on if you're on YouTube, onicpodcast.com if you want to listen to the past episode. The person I'm about to introduce to you today, her name is Yennefer Mendez, and she is someone who I tracked down months ago. I don't know how, well, I do know how, but I don't know how the friendship came from it. Um, I found out, so someone on ClickFunnels Facebook group sounded like they had a lot more in it than just being a regular poster. And I started to follow her that way because I found out she's helping with the Facebook group at ClickFunnels, and I like to follow smart people. Then I started to follow her posts, start to realize, wow, I really like what she's talking about. She's, and I was getting really interested in Facebook groups a few months ago, so it was like the perfect time. And I still remember I was out to dinner with my family and my Facebook group was had been blowing up, all of them. And I was like, I can't handle this. Like, I'm, I need to be present with my family, but I'm on my group, so I need someone's help. First person, only person I messaged was her. Um, turns out for good reason, she is one of the world's top Facebook group admins recognized by Facebook. She actually helps Facebook, like they listen to her. I don't know anyone else in my life who Facebook listens to. They listen to her. She gives feature opinions and advice and they actually implement. Um, so Yennefer, if you could please get them to pull that app out again, that would be awesome. I know they won't do it though. That's okay. She's also an Amazon bestseller. Uh, so grab her book. Uh, it's called Your Million Dollar Story. And so we're really blessed to have her here today. It's going to turn into almost a pseudo therapy session. Let's see where it goes. But having said that, Jennifer, thanks for being a part of this little experimental podcast episode. I'm excited to, to I'm explore. So it. excited to be here. That was an awesome introduction. Honestly, it's an honor to be here and obviously serving your communities and sharing my expertise with, with your following. So let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Thank you. Thank you, Yennefer. So, so first of all, people are probably wondering, why do I love groups, but I'm willing to walk away from Facebook? What's this issue I'm having? All right, I'll tell you what I'm having. I'm having like a mid-30 life crisis. Mid, uh, 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 what do they call it? Not mid-life, a tri-life crisis, not a crisis. It's just, I'm at this point in my life where I, I woke up one day and I realized, man, I've achieved all of the things I wanted to achieve, right? Financially, this, that, my... And I'm just rejoicing and enjoying different things now than I used to 10, 15 years ago. Time with my family, time with my friends. And at Learn, it's so crazy. I couldn't care less if we have a profitable month or a month where we lose money. It, it seems to have lost money as a metric has lost its value. Now, I totally understand. I come from a blessed place. I get that. I've went through, it's been 20 years, all right? So I, money is very important. Don't get me wrong. It, it's how you feel a business. I started to ask myself, Yennefer, why did I even start inside my head as a newsletter? It was because I was craving that connection. That's what was happening. I started Learn to impact lives and to help people. And the more and more, the bigger it's gotten, I'm getting pulled away from those people. And that was starting to create this like void. Um, so I created the newsletter and that's awesome, but it didn't fill the void because it's a one-way communication. And yeah, people reply and they send me emails back and that's awesome. But one day I was like, I wonder how people would respond if I put up a Facebook group. And it just took off. I mean, it, it just took its own life. People were talking and conversing. So that was great. It got to be too much. 
and I started noticing it was just taking up too much of my time, which is when I came to you. And I, I still haven't really fully figured out the balance because my group's a little different. It's not really about the group. It's more about following whatever the heck I'm thinking. With Facebook, I'll tell everybody, it's a distraction to me right now in my life. The, the profile side, not the group side. I want to be laser focused. I'm about to go for the next big thing for learn. It's scary. All right. Imagine this. I'm on the mountain. I'm climbing. I have to take a leap now but I'm not tied down. I don't have any back. I don't have any parachutes or nothing. So I'm, f I have to get myself fully focused on this leap I'm about to make. So everybody just wants you to understand why I'm, I, I'm saying Facebook has become an issue for me. It's just for a few months, I'm like, man, I don't want any distraction, any opinions, any thoughts. I just want to focus. Having said that, I do. I miss my group. I messaged Yana for just yesterday. I think yesterday, the day before I was like, I'm not, I'm not sure yet. Like, I'm being completely neurotic about this. Maybe I'm out, maybe I'm not, I don't know, because I miss it. So, Jennifer, let's talk about, I guess in a way, why is it that over the last few months I have actually felt the impact of Facebook groups on my business? Like there's something magical about it. You obviously know what it is. Talk to our audience who maybe doesn't have a group and talk to them about what they're missing out on. Yeah. So, so kind of like rewind when you first mm -hmm. um, launched this group and we first talked about inside my head, remember one, I sent that questionnaire and one of the questions was like, what's the mission of this group? Like, what do you want to accomplish with the community? Right. We have to have a, a strategy before we just go and create the community. There has to be um, these things in place so that, you know, the outcome and what type of content you're going to put in there based on your mission and your vision. So I remember that you told me uh, this was not something to monetize, right? Just like you mentioned in the beginning, you don't want, this is not a business thing. This is more like your personal thing. You want to share with people what's really in your head. It, it really was that serious. You were for real when you said that you were being honest with your followers. And I was like, this is awesome because I really don't see that in like the Facebook world. It, it's usually yeah. the opposite of that. So yeah. then when we got into your community and we saw it was, actually so active like so many people were responding to your content they wanted to engage with you they they felt closer to you and i think that's why you have had so much success in that community with the short amount of time that you had it because remember you said that now your company's huge and now you feel like far away from the people that you want to serve and that you've been serving for all these years then you you brought out this community and that connected you back to those people so yeah. everyone is loving that community because of that so so with that being said it has grown because of that and, and i understand from your perspective because when we have goals and we we want to as an entrepreneur right we have goals we got to get focused you know we got to uh, min minimize the things that distract us from you know us getting to our goals and i feel like that's kind of where you are right now you have this huge goal i don't know what that is but i guess we're here on, on, on one of the podcast episodes coming up you have this huge goal and you're like this is a distraction um I think it's all about discipline. And I also believe it's about like setting uh, your schedule. Like I'm a person that I set up my schedule hourly. Like I have an hour for eating, an hour for going into my groups, an hour of, you know, everything. I have it broken down by hours. So my advice for don't leave the Facebook world because this is how people are now connecting back with you like that, that, yeah. that authentic you, that you, you, you know, that everybody wants, you know, to get in contact with. That's where, that's where your people are. And that's, those are the, those are your true fans. Like the people that are in there are the true fans that follow you for more than just learn. They follow you for the entrepreneur on it that you are. Yeah. So, well, and it's funny they follow me for some of the madness I've been through over the last few weeks that they didn't yeah. get to participate in because I went quiet. Um, and it's funny, I'm telling people about it now. They're asking, they're like, where are you? Where have you been? Like, that yeah. means they love your content. They love who you are, even the crazy posts that you put up because those are authentic you. Yeah. yeah. So I think, um, you, you know, you mentioned something and I wrote it down and I circled it and I like highlighted it and it was like discipline. That is the core issue. And I think for everyone listening right now, with social media, that's the problem. Like anything else. So let's say, okay, I'll, g I'll give you an example. And Jennifer, you can agree or disagree with me, but like my wife and I, we have a bit of a tradition there. You know, I'm not the guy that says, cut Netflix, hustle your, you know, you know, work till your nose bleeds. Like I just, that doesn't mean. My wife and I have a tradition every night, you know, usually around nine to 11 or so, we watch Netflix. We have a TV show or a movie or something. We have the luxury because we don't have any kids yet. So we just kind of use that time. 
but I know. But think about it this way, right, everyone? What if I let that become an addiction and I started watching shows from 9 to 11 a.m. and then from 12 to 1.30 p.m. and then from 3 to 5.30 p.m.? Anything that we do and we do too much of can become a problem. Anything. You, you can literally drink too much water. You could kill yourself with water. Like it's, it's, so for me, that was my realization. Having it on my phone, I was having a discipline problem because even if I was walking from my office to a meeting, I would pull it up to see what's going on, right? And innately, no matter how much people love me, you get those few people in the group that want to fight with you and then it's personal because it's, it's your personal group. So one of the thoughts I've had is, hey, how about I film content, I log content, um, I utilize, for example, you and your service to just log the content um, or whatever the case may be, but I use my browser. So I don't put the app back on my phone since that seems to be my discipline breaker. Um, I use a browser. So that way I do have a set amount of time per day where I'm on my computer, on my browser, I log in, I answer the, you know, engage, and then I, and then I move away. Um, and that's been one thing I've been thinking about the last day or two. But you're 100% right. I have now done every kind of social media. I've dabbled with every kind. YouTube, Instagram, you know, heck, I even did TikTok for some time. And, um, I, and I love them all. They all serve their own purpose. But the kind of connection Facebook groups is creating, it's hard to explain. People will never understand it until you do it. Like, I actually know people now. Like, there are people who, when they respond, I'm like, oh, I knew you would respond like that because I feel like I'm getting to know you. That is an interesting place. I never thought I could do that with thousands of people. I, I just never thought that. And Facebook groups has somehow allowed it. So here's, a, here's my question for you. Um, as you work across so many different groups, right? And you see you know, people like myself, or you see people that have much more structure and, and discipline. What are you finding to work well in groups? Because even with our group, when you and I started, I mean, even before we and I started, it was a ridiculously high engagement rate. And it's kind of fallen over time. It, what is that? Is it consistency of posting? Is it type of posting? Talk to me a little bit about that side too. Because yeah. as I build my new discipline, I want to know what's important in that discipline. Yeah, so consistency is definitely important. Um, when when I've seen groups like kind of like go down a hill and it's like they become, you know, these dead communities is because there's no content being put in there. So people are not engaging. So obviously consistency is important. Um, my recommendation is posting every single day, like every single day. So it does take work. Like a Facebook group is not just, hey, I'm going to throw this group together and boom, it's kind of, it's going to run on its own. It's not. You have to post at least once a day, every single day. Um, the type of content that gets the most engagements is Facebook Lives. Like everybody loves Facebook Lives. And now, obviously, there are like streaming softwares that we can use to stream into the communities to make it look like it's live so you can pre-record your content. Yes, you can do that. But I always recommend, you know, at least once a month to go actually live, like really you live so that you can be able to engage with the people inside the community while they're, you know, in the comments, asking questions, talking to you and, you know, you responding to, to their content. So videos, posting every day, doing Facebook lives. Um, one thing that we do traditionally in, in every single community that we manage is we poll the audience. We create a poll and we ask the people, like, what do you want to see more of in this community? And I think that's also important as well, because sometimes people want to create communities and just feed people content because of what they think that the people want. But if you ask the people and we do this quarterly with all the communities that we manage, um, hey, what type of content do you want to see, right? And then you serve the members with the content based on the things that they told you that they wanted to see. We usually see higher engagement rates. Obviously, mm -hmm. the Inside My Head group is a little different because um, it's just you posting and it's your content from your head. But my recommendation for you for that community is to batch your content. Like sit down, you know, create the content maybe once a month, batch your content, and then set that time where it's like 30 minutes, you know, maybe 30 minutes a day where you go on the browser and you just engage with the people in the comments because they do want to engage with, with you. It's not just about yeah. creating the content and posting it up. You know, they, they love when you're responding and tagging them in the responses of your own posts. So that would be my recommendation to you and, and stay off the app because the app can be distracting. You get lost in Facebook. By the time you know yeah. it's four hours later, you've been scrolling, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. So I, I like that. That that's got a disciplinary. It's got something to manage during the work hours. Um, you know, it's I film all the time. So I mean, at least two to three days a week. I'm. Yeah, and. It, you know, like, for example, I'm going to finish this podcast episode with you. There's nothing stopping me from taking 15 minutes to film another three, four videos. Right. And just having that ready to go for the team to be able to you know, send to me and I can post it and, and batch it um, with groups. What's also awesome for everyone to know is you can pre-schedule posts so you can sit down at one time and just schedule, you know, a good few days or a week's worth of posts. I've been thinking about that as well. I've been thinking about the fact that if I can line up posts and um, at least like during the, even the pause, like I, like it is going to be about six months. I would say start clock started. Pause it. I think that you should let the people know and tell them like, yeah. this is all behind the scenes. Just like how we're talking right here on this podcast, like be vulnerable, yeah. be honest and say, Hey guys, right now I'm about to see this huge leap of faith, whatever that is that you're working on yeah. and whether you want to share it out or not and let them know yeah. in the community, like, Hey, I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to pause for X amount of time, but I will be back. Trust me, we will continue to grow this community. I love being part of this community. Just right now, yeah. my focus is on X, Y, Z thing. That whole vulnerability yeah. thing, people magnetize to that. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, here's another thought. So my thought was because I want to be super focused on this thing that we're going towards, right? So I just say six months, but is it September would count? September, October, November, December. Yeah, it's actually six months. Um, I thought, well, everything I'm doing right now, I feel like if it doesn't line up with that, then it's it's it, that's how my, my perspective has been. My time has to be in alignment with that. Otherwise, I'm wasting time. So the other thing I thought was, what if I actually announced it to the group and I said, follow my journey? So come along with me on this six month journey. I'm not ready to completely reveal what I'm doing for sake of protecting it. But, you know, by end of year or so around holiday time, like I will be ready to reveal it. And I thought, how cool would it be to actually, that's the perk of being inside my head is that you get to follow along my journey and watch what I'm doing. And for that, all I have to even do is maybe every few days I post one video that says, hey, here's what's happened over the last few days. Here's the things I've been working on, the people I've spoken to and um, things I've learned, things that have gone right, things that have gone wrong. Um, and that could be in its own way, kind of shape the content of the community for the next six months. So I'm not sitting here trying to figure out because for the first few months, it actually started to get weird because being like sporadic thoughts, it's it's tough, right? Like, but if I literally am going to talk about what's in my head, it's easier because then I'm just sitting down and saying, well, this is literally what I'm thinking about right now. I'm thinking about. But that was you know, your original goal. Like when I asked absolutely. you what was the vision, you said, exactly. I just want to share behind the scenes stuff. So I think you just gave yourself the answer right then and there. Yep. Like, I'm not coaching you through this. You gave yourself the enlightened moment right now. Like, yeah. I'm just going to create a video every few days and share where I'm at with my life. And, and you know what? What Here's the crazy thing. So here's what happens. Um, you get so sucked into engagement metrics sometimes that you lose that, right? So I was, start, that was starting to happen because I can tell you right now what kinds of posts got the most feedback reviews. And sometimes those posts are on topics that are a little controversial and it's actually not things I want to brew about, but you know, like, oh my God, I got to get my metrics up higher and whatever. So I got too addicted to that. A part of it, I think that's when it starts to become a burden and it starts to stops being fun and it starts being a job. Whereas if I plug it into what I'm literally doing, you know, it's like, this is what I'm working on right now. And then I don't care about the filming quality. I can literally take my cell phone and just, you know, film wherever I am. I don't care about anything. I just, I post it and people can like it or not like it. So, but you're hundred percent right. I mean, it's the group is called inside my head. I mean, it's pretty. You know, it's like yes. what it's supposed to it's be. It's all the crazy things happening in your head, in your background, like the back of learn, right? Like this is like yeah. behind the scenes and you're taking people through this journey. And honestly, yeah. for that specific group, I mean, all, the other groups, they have, you know, other missions and visions. But for this specific group, that's what you want anyway, because those are the yeah. people that the people that are going to stay connected are your true fans, right? Like your true yeah. people, like they're like, ride or die so then yeah. whatever you do on the outside if you start a new business if you have another branch of your business they're gonna run to that thing because they have already built that relationship with you from like that behind the scene perspective 
Yeah. No, I, and that's the power of Facebook me. group, building that loyalty. Like Facebook groups equals loyalty, which equals way more like long-term value for your clients, your customers, your followers. So, so let's talk. So for a minute, for everyone who else is listening right now, I want to connect this back to them. And so I'll talk for a minute. Here is the value I saw, everybody. The value I saw was, for example, um, this is a live example. I never intended for it to be a monetization, but it just happened. So I got really into crypto uh, a few months ago. I've had crypto since 2017, but I, st- I got more into like, let me learn about this a few months ago. And I started learning about it and I started doing really well with it. And I started getting connected to people that you know, gave me advice that I followed and made a lot of money from. So I remember posting it once in my group, like, hey, do you guys want to know about this? I don't ever talk about crypto, but do you want to know what I'm doing? And everyone's like, yes, we, it was overwhelming. So I started posting it and it turns out I start posting my results and I start saying, well, I'm using this tool, I'm using this software. Well, that turned into one of the top affiliate promotions I've ever done. And I never meant for it to be. But hey, if you're going to buy the software, yeah, please buy it through me. I make some money. Like there's nothing wrong with that. And that was what, I realized that Facebook groups, if you attack a group with the aim of making money from it, it almost works backwards, right? But if you attack it from genuinely just trying to get to know the people and help them, and then it, they autom- people, I think what people don't realize is when you help people enough, they automatically ask you how to pay you. It, it's just, it's a byproduct. It happens all the time. I'll give you a Jennifer and I, well, well, prime example, I messaged her a few times, I had asked her some questions. She gave me advice, gave me opinions. I asked her, okay, now how can I pay you to get more structured advice from you? We did that. She has a great audit service, which I don't know if she still offers or not, but if she does, you should take her up on it. She gave me this awesome feedback. And when I got the feedback, I'm like, this sounds amazing. I don't really want to do any of it. So can you do it for me? You know, like, it's awesome. I, I that you can do, I don't even want to do it. You do it. Yeah, I was like, I learned so much. This is so epic. And like, the, you just do it now. I don't want to do it. Um, and that turned from, so there was never, I never watched a sales video of Yennefer. I never had a sales call. As a matter of fact, we never did like a onboarding. Like I literally messaged you saying, hey, I'm ready to buy. Like, where do I go? Um, but that was because I engaged with her through this longer period of time on Facebook. So, so for anyone who sells you know, any kind of courses, content, coaching, um, whether it be low ticket or high ticket, I've seen it work. But Jennifer, I'll come to you. You've worked with so many people. Who would you say is like groups best for? Like my, I don't know. I guess if I sell cell phone covers, maybe. Yeah. Like who, who is a perfect person to have a group? I get that question all the time. Like what niche, what, you know, what type of, you know, is your perfect client? Everyone, everyone should have a Facebook group. Like even brick and mortar businesses should have a Facebook group. Like your local pizza shop down the street should have a Facebook group. Okay. This is how you build loyalty. Communities is the new marketing. Okay. Like, Mm. I mean, first of all, it's free traffic, right? Facebook is invested into community so much that they, you know, now they created in the feed, there's an actual, you know, piece of the feed where it's just Facebook groups. I mean, the, if you watch the Super Bowl, they have Super Bowl commercials, like Facebook groups, <laughs> the Super Bowl commercials, because Facebook is so invested in communities because they know that if the people get into a group for that, whatever it is that they want to learn, the same topic is one topic, each community they get so connected that that's worth more than advertising over here on the Facebook ads because you're building that true relationship. Over time, it it just works out better. So any niche, any industry, any business, online, offline, you should build a community for your brand and be authentic because that's what, you know, one of the things that stood out to me about what you just mentioned, that if you come to it, or like, how can I make money? How can I make money on this group? You know, it's going to be a little harder for you to make money in that group. But if you come to it like, hey, this is my brand. Like, this is my passion. This is what I love to do. I want to provide value to people, right? Then they're yeah. going to be magnetized to you because we are the product. People are yeah. the product. They buy into yeah. people. People buy because they like, know, and trust you. When they start doing that through your communities, then whenever you offer anything, they're going to run. Like, perfect example with the crypto thing. You wasn't promoting that in 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 the inside my head you was just sharing like what you were doing hey this is what i'm doing right now why did people flee because they trusted you because you've been engaged in that community they're like wow like he won't lie to me like he's he's doing this for himself so Mm -hmm. any brand any niche that's the answer to that 
No, it's brilliant. I love it. Um, I, I will tell you guys one thing that she's 100% right. So you said even a local brick and mortar. So Manoj, I don't know if you're listening. I, you might be. He listens to my episodes. Manoj has a pizza place. It's about 30 minutes from here. I love pizza, by the way. If anyone doesn't know that, I'm obsessed with pizza. Um, even though I'm gluten-free, dairy-free, I still love pizza. <laughs> um, so um, Manoj owns a pizza shop and his wife, him, him and his wife, they make specialty pizza. And you, they make like all kinds of fusion pizza. Like they'll put like Indian dishes on a pizza. And if you ever told me, I'd be like, what? And then I started eating some of it. It's become like the thing now. My family asks for it. I have to drive 30 minutes to go get it, but like, I'll go do that. Yeah, I know. Me too. Um, but you're so right. If he had a group, I would take a moment to go share my experience. I would put pictures up of the pizza I bought. I would, he could have an opportunity because his wife is constantly announcing new things, new recipes, new science experiments she's doing on pizza and people would buy it right away. I mean, I would, yeah. anything new she creates, I would buy to taste it, to see what it's like. That's a pizza place. I would never, you're, you, you made a light bulb go off. I would never think I should have a group if I have a pizza place. Yes. And, and let me just give you like another, you know, I guess another perspective of the way that I see communities, like your business page, right. is like your storefront, right. Your mm -hmm. Facebook business page, your storefront of whatever it is. If he has the pizza shop, if it's your page, the learn page, that's the storefront. When you bring people into a community, it's like your living room. Okay. It's like, okay, now you're yeah. coming into my house. I'm going to give you a little bit more of me, right? We're going to yeah. build this relationship. And I trust you because I allowed you to come into my living room. So yeah. I see the communities as that, as your living room, where you can give exclusive content that you can't provide in your wall, in your business page. And that, again, brings loyalty. Yeah. No, that's, that is very smart. I, okay, here's the thing. So everyone, if you don't have a Facebook group yet, you should have a Facebook group. Um, before we even start wrapping up, Jennifer, I, I will tell you, I've had some ahas. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you full credit for those. Um, we used to do something in this episodes that I don't do anymore. It's called a TKO. Um, you know, total knockout, you total knockout. It's a boxing term, right? So, cause we're in the ring, you know, fighting entrepreneur, all that jazz. Yeah. So you've had your TKO with me. I'll come back and tell you what's happened. Um, uh, but before that, I really do want people to engage with you in your education about groups because it's been pretty life-changing for me and I've been doing this stuff for 20 years. So if I'm learning, you guys can definitely be learning. Jennifer, where can people go to follow more of your work, to follow you and to, you know, even give you money? Yeah. So I offer group audits. So if you do have a community, that was something that I did for you and your brands. Yes. If you do have a community, you're more than welcome to go to groupaudits.com. That is where you can sign up for an audit and I can go audit your community and I will share with you guys exactly what I would do if it was my community and how to step up the game and take it to the next level. Um, I'm also yeah. on all the social media platforms. I'm mostly active on Facebook, obviously, because community is my jam. Um, so you can find me on Facebook, Yana Fernandez, and I'm sure there'll be, you know, my name spelled out here somewhere where people can find it because it's unique. It's spelled different. <laughs> yeah. Uh you guys can check us out. Go to onicpodcast.com. We'll have it in the show notes or go to youtube.com. Type in Onyx and all. It'll be an episode there. Um, follow her. You know, she posts all the time amazing content and you're going to absolutely love. So here's my thing. First of all, my big conclusion for everyone is I don't, I don't care what kind of business you have. I do. I really mean it. If you care to have a connection to your customer, which I'm trying to think of any business right now that would answer no to that. I just, I don't see it, right? You should. So... You know, if you care to have a connection to your customer, I'm telling you, I've done it all, all right? Short of having actual face, uh, focus groups, which is still not as good as Facebook groups because you get a focus group, you're gonna get four or five people in a room. Man, I, 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 get, I get it, trust me, one thing, I'll tell you right now, if something happens at Learn that my customers are not happy about, it is in the group, it is in there fast. But also if something great happens at Learn that people are very happy with, it is in the group. So for me as a CEO, it's actually been a really fun place to just watch the pulse of what's happening in the organization as a whole. So no matter how big you are, if you're the CEO of GE listening, you should have a group and you should be looking at that group. And if you're just starting your business, start it at a group, get to really know people, opportunities come out of that. You start to learn what people are interested in and you get to solve those problems. And then that's where you create value, which is, which is your profit. But um, everyone should have a group, start the group, be consistent, mold it into whatever it can be for you, but be consistent. 
I you know, have not posted in a few weeks. I mean, that's going to kick my butt. I'm going to have to lick my wounds from that. I'm going to have to nurture Facebook again, make them happy with me again. So just be consistent, right? It's not just Facebook, but it's it's your followers. It's the people that are in your group. Here's my TKO or here, here's what I've taken away. The big aha moment I had is I keep telling people, and I, one of the biggest reasons I'm pulling away from a lot of stuff is because I want to fully focus on some stuff. Well, why not bring people inside my head along with me on that journey? Let them focus on that with me and actually let me have them hold me accountable to be focused on that. Because the minute I start going public about that and talking, maybe that's been one of my fears is once I go public about it, there's no turning back. back. Yeah, there's no turning back. Like I'm leaping. I'm, I'm going for that, you know, the other rock. But we're, I mean, we're already there. I've already poured like millions of dollars into this. So hey, there's no turning back already. We're going. But I think it could be a really fun experience for those who follow me to see how it turns out um, in its rawness. And for me, it gives my content aim. It, it, it gives me structure and that allows me to have discipline. Um, and I still don't have to put the Facebook app back on my phone. That's the big thing I wanted to avoid doing. Uh, and so yeah, for that was our conversation. I'm so glad that intuition took me to turning this into a bit of a therapy slash consult session. A community um, therapy session. <laughs> Yeah, but everyone, take away from this what you will. Think about it this way. I, I I didn't ask Jennifer, hey, what do I do with my personal Facebook profile? I am just as happy to walk the heck away from that. Couldn't care less about it. I mean it. But I knew deep down inside, walking away from groups was going to be a big mistake, and I don't want to do it. And that's why I've been hanging on. So if I, even in a moment where I'm saying, hey, I'm ultra-focused, and if I'm still saying Facebook is like, boom, here, on my priority list, think about that. Where should it be on your list? You should, it should be somewhere, all right? So follow Jennifer, follow her information, and of course, follow us here on this podcast. And by the way, if you wanna be in my group, Inside My Head, go to Inside My, just type in Inside My Head, one word on Facebook, it'll come up, or go to InsideMyHead.com, join my email newsletter, and then um, it'll take you to my group as well. Jennifer, it's been awesome working with you, by the way. I'm really excited to continue supporting all the work you're doing and to continue um, you know, getting to know you better and your work. Thank you for all you've done for Learn and for myself as well. I really want to take a moment to appreciate you. Oh man, I want to thank you for having me here. And it's been an honor because you know I, I've followed your journey for many, many years. And now to be able to get to serve you and your communities with my superpower to me is an actual honor. So I just thank you. And everybody that's listening, go join inside my head like today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. And everyone go make sure you follow Yana first. So everyone, if you're on YouTube, what do you do? Hit subscribe, leave a comment, thumbs up, plus icon, I don't know, whatever icons are, click stuff. Leave, yeah, click everything, all right? And if you're listening to us on any other uh, platform, please make sure you subscribe so we can send all that good juju back to the platform and they push the podcast up. Learn.com if you want to be a part of what we're doing. Huge transformation coming. I am super pumped, super excited. I'm so excited. It's actually scary. I'm going to be honest. It's scary. Uh, but that's when you know you're doing something that could potentially be very big. So L-U-R-N.com. Make it happen. Onicpodcast.com to binge listen to all of our other episodes. As I always say, when life pushes you, stand straight, smile, push it the heck back. Jennifer, thank you so much. See you on the next one. Thanks for listening to The Fighting Entrepreneur with your host, Onyx Singal.